Hello and welcome to my 12 days of Christmas. My name is Christine, I run Christine Rose Photography, and this set of videos is here to make you a better photographer over the next 12 days. Full disclosure, I am a nightscape photographer. I go out and take photographs of landscapes under the night stars. These videos are targeted at photographers who are a little bit crazy like me and uh, like to go out and run around in the middle of the night. That is not to say though, that if you are a landscape photographer or other photographer that these videos will not be useful for you, they will. So I'm going to be talking some gear with you, maybe if you need a last minute Christmas present. I'm going to be talking about shooting, so actual practical step-by-step, -step, how do we go out and shoot some things that are particularly relevant during the holiday season. And then lastly, we're gonna get a little bit into inspiration because there are times when we've got the gear, we've got a nice night, we've got whatever, and we don't feel like going out. So that's what we're gonna be diving into for this set of 12 videos. Okay, without further ado, let's get into this, our first video. So I wanted to chat with you about my shooting accessories. Everyone's always talking gear, 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 gear. What are you shooting this on? What's your camera? What's your lens? What's etc. Those are great and those are big things and those are useful. But when we're actually getting out and shooting, some of the things that are the most useful are the small accessories. So I want to talk today about my must have small accessories that make my shoots more successful and that I think you should have in your bag. Also, these are small. They're easy to say, put in a stocking. So if you need a last minute, Christmas idea for a loved one for you, uh, this might just be up your alley. Okay, so first up, a lens heater. Now, I live in Nova Scotia, we're a peninsula. We are surrounded by the ocean. You can't get more than 45 minutes away from the ocean, actually. And uh, condensation is a huge issue here. So I have a lens heater. Um, and for all of these, you guys, I'm linking them up. So I have my kit.co account is um, underneath and has all the links for exactly what I'm talking about here. So if you're like, what is it? What kind? Where can I find it? All of that you can find in the link. So this is powered by USB and it wraps around my camera lens. Um, I use this one and I have used this one now for a couple years and it's worked fine for me. Uh, disclosure that these are not very expensive. So you get these, you can look up lens heater or dew heater and they're in the 30 to $40 range. There are much more expensive versions of these that are specifically made for telescopes and they will plug into a six volt or 12 volt um, controller and these are a lot more expensive. They're also a lot more controllable. So I have this one here. It's worked fine for my devices. I have used this when I have done uh, star trails that are multiple hours long, plug this in and plug it into a, a portable USB battery and it will keep me going all night. So that leads me to my second object that I take out, which you're probably not gonna be surprised, is a power bank. Okay, so I, I have Mophie, I really like this. This is actually over eight years old uh, and it still works amazing. So if you have a USB heater, you gotta have a backup battery source because it will plug in, plug it in, it's gonna run and keep everything nice and warm. Now, I actually have multiples of these and I always make sure that they are charged and in my bag. Not only for this, but I put this in my bag and I also have cords um, for my phone and for anything else that can be powered by USB. If I get stranded outside or my phone is dying or something along those lines, I want to have power. So having at least one of these, I recommend two or more in your camera bag is key. And a lot of people ask like, what's the, uh, what's the power on it? So this is uh, 6,000, I think I have a 6,000 and a 4,000. There are 10,000 uh, milliamp ones out there. There are 20,000 milliamp ones out there. Those are bigger. Um, and uh, will charge longer. So it's completely up to you, the capacity that you get. Uh, mine at 4,000 and 6,000 do just fine. Okay, so next, after that, while we're on the topic of charging things, headlamp, really good headlamp. So to be able to actually see what you're doing in the middle of the night and not be holding a flashlight is so key. And I actually have multiples. This guy here, 
charges via USB. And so one of the reasons I have this one is because if, say, a certain son of mine takes this and runs around the house with it on uh, when I'm not home for a solid day, it's happened, uh, and I take this out thinking it's charged and it's not charged, I can always charge it up here. I have another backup one that runs off of AAAs, and I have a whole bunch of AAAs that I put in my bag as well. So a good headlamp, absolutely invaluable. I would recommend getting a headlamp that will do light, but will also do red light. Uh, because this will save your vision and if you're out shooting with other photographers they are likely going to expect that you're going to be using a red light as opposed to a white headlamp okay come right along just a few little things that really make a difference okay my next one is tupperware no but this is actually how i store and travel with my intervalometers and an intervalometer is basically a timed remote. So you might've heard this called um, a timer remote or a timed remote. This is a corded remote that goes into your camera and lets you take multiple exposures in a row without you having to program it in your camera or take multiple shots on your camera. It will also work just like a wired shutter release. So this is a wired shutter release and an interval uh, timed remote all in one. These are so key. If I am doing any type of shooting where I want to take multiple exposures in a row, I'm gonna want this. And I'm doing that all the time with night photography. So think meter shower. Yeah, do you wanna be sitting there with your camera, clicking the shutter every 15 to 30 seconds? No, you don't. Um, using my tracker. So when I use my tracker, I will take multiple shots in a row to stack them together and get a better signal to noise ratio. This means I can set it up, it runs, I don't even have to think about it. The other thing, is being able to get longer exposures when you're in bulb. Most cameras will let you go to 30 seconds in your manual shooting mode for your shutter speed. There are some cameras, I know Olympus has one that lets you do 60 seconds. There's not very many cameras that will let you do more than that unless you are physically holding down the shutter. Now, I dare you to try it and see how wobbly things are when you are physically depressing your shutter for, say, two minutes long, etc. cetera. Um, and there are some out there that you don't have to physically hold it down, but you have to click it to start and to end, and that's gonna bring camera shake in as well. So having a remote like this is super useful. Now, I store mine in a Tupperware because I have broken the connection on at least three of these remotes by not storing them like this. The Tupperware is optional, uh, but I find it very, very useful. Okay, so next up on our list is an L bracket. Okay, you don't 100% need one of these, but what an L bracket does is you mount it on here and it has a quick release on the bottom. This goes in to your tripod head. If you decide that you want to take a shot in portrait, you unclip it, flip it, all of a sudden you're in portrait mode and you're shooting again. It is so much quicker and it's much more stable. Most tripod heads, when you flip them to be 90 degrees, they're more wobbly and they might not stay in place depending on the weight of your camera. So I really like to use this. Now, a couple quick notes here. You will notice that my ports, which are over here, I can't currently access. Now this in particular, this one, I can use it where it's over here and I can tighten this. I don't have it tightened up really good right now. I can tighten it up here. So I do have access and I can plug in my intervalometer. Um, some L brackets are not gonna let you do that. You can get L brackets that are a universal. So this is a Manfrotto one and my tripod heads are Manfrotto. So I need this one because it has a, a proprietary quick release system. Um, but there are others that have just the regular Arca Swiss quick release and you can get them that they are universal. So they work across multiple different cameras. Good if you have more than one camera or you can get them that are specifically tailored for your camera. So they have pieces that are milled out so that you can get to the different parts that are accessible in your camera. Okay. Now, the last thing that I have for you is keeping warm. I'm in Canada, it gets cold. It's not as cold as some years, but it gets cold. So these live in basically everything that I have. 
you can go into anything that I own. So my purse, my camera bag, my car, uh, my jackets, and you will find these. I stash them everywhere. So we have toe warmers here and hand warmers here. Um, hot hands, but you can get um, other, other ones, uh, grabber warmers warmers these are disposable ones i have these everywhere i have some reusable ones as well and there are battery powered ones but these are so useful put them in my mitts put them in my boots uh, keep me warm the other thing that i will use these for is my usb battery if i'm out shooting in really cold conditions my battery which might be powering my lens warmer um, or might be powering something else is likely going to die more quickly i will take these and put them on and it will keep my battery going for a longer period of time. The other thing that can happen is my camera battery will die a lot more quickly in the cold. So I might take one of these and put it on the bottom where my camera battery is at um, to keep that warmer so it keeps running for a longer period of time. Okay, that's my must have accessories for going out and shooting. I'd love to hear what you think. Are there things that you absolutely have to have that I didn't mention? Are there things on here that you use that you absolutely love? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And please come back tomorrow where we're going to get into day two of our 12 days of Christmas.